All right, so I'm trying to become a software engineer, which means I need to be doing a ton of leak code and building side projects and applying to jobs and pretty much all of that. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. Today, I actually was able to finish um, eight or nine leak code problems. A lot of them were just reviews on ones that I've done in the past, but the reason that I'm redoing them is because I did them like a year ago. So now I'm trying to complete a list of some of the most fundamental problems in Leak Code and DSA overall, which is the Neat Code 250 list. And so today and throughout this video, I actually ended up finishing the stack section and then I moved on to 1D dynamic programming. And the reason I did that is because I have an online assessment coming up for the end of this week, so in six days. And from what I can tell, this company mainly prioritizes dynamic programming in their online assessments. So basically, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm as prepared as possible. And to be honest, out of all the ones that I did today, I found that most of them were pretty easy because like I said, I had already done a lot of these problems before and even though they were 1D dynamic programming problems and they were like tagged as leak code mediums, since I've done them before in the past, it wasn't that bad. Until I got to one question called decode ways, which is leak code number 91. And this one also wasn't too bad. I was able to think of like the brute force solution, but usually even if I think of the brute force solution, I don't like to code it because um, I know it's not something that I would do in an interview, so I don't think it would really help me if I did it here. But anyways, I thought of the brute force solution for this problem, and essentially what this problem was, was you're given a string of numbers, like let's just say it was 1, 2, um, and your job is to decode it into all of the possible combinations that it could be. So like I said, if you're given 1, 2, let's just say a one represents an a and then a two represents a b or another combination could be that one two is actually a 12 which represents the letter l and so with this string of numbers your job is to find out how many possible combinations of number to letter mappings that you can make so if you have um, like a two three that could possibly be one letter or if you have a two three it can be two different letters and it just basically goes like that for the entirety of the string and so in my head I didn't really understand why we needed dynamic programming for this problem because I was thinking why don't we just iterate throughout the entire string and then as soon as we see one valid um, digit then we know okay this can possibly map to um, one letter and then once we get that we can see okay if we go to the next digit can this possibly make a letter with two digits and if so then we add another to our result because let's say you have one digit and then one digit right after the number of ways to make the first digit relies on the number of ways that you can make the one that's after it. And also, I won't even lie, I've seen this problem before and I think I've solved it, solved it before as well, but it was still pretty hard. Like It actually took me, I think, still like around 40 minutes because, like I said, I haven't solved some of these problems in like months, maybe even a year. But I will say, once you kind of just hammer in on a certain topic for any amount of time, it you kind of start recognizing the patterns to use. And so for, even for this problem, which was pretty hard, it wasn't that out of like out of left field for me because I had one seen it before and two, I had done, you know, more difficult dynamic programming problems before. So I kind of knew just like the general patterns for this one. And so I would say that definitely made it easier because when I was like doing the code for the first time and I was going through like pretty much any medium problem, any easy problem even, I really found out that it was like intensely hard if you hadn't studied DSA at all, which at that point in time, I had never taken a DSA class or even heard of a lot of these data structures or algorithms. So for me, it was definitely extremely hard without having that prerequisite knowledge that I think you really should have. And so if you're in that position where maybe you're just getting into leak code or you don't have that many problems solved and it seems like anything, any easy question or any medium question that you try and do, you literally have no idea and you're just like staring at your screen, then I really recommend doing like some sort of online data structures class and just kind of learning the basics and building at least a little bit of intuition. I know a lot of people are going to think that 
um you should just try and like get your hands dirty and solve as many problems as you can as quick as you can which definitely it works and it helps but i think also just having a bit of theoretical knowledge before going into these problems is also pretty key to building that intuition and then eventually getting to a point where you can recognize the different patterns for different problems and start understanding okay when should i use this data structure and pretty you know pretty much just getting a good feel for these leak code problems but yeah with all that out the way let's go ahead get into some of the leak code and some of the footage that i recorded All right, I just finished leak code number 84, largest rectangle in histogram. And this is one of the problems that I had started yesterday, but I didn't get to finish it because I, one, didn't really understand it. And two, I watched like the knee code video and I didn't want to just regurgitate his answer right away. So I decided to wait until today to try and see if I could remember it and at least come up with some of it on my own and thankfully i was able to um so yeah i got this one down now i'm gonna go ahead and move on to dynamic programming For you guys, nothing has happened, but for me, I just kind of witnessed a crazy time jump because unfortunately, I got called in to do some stuff. Um, so I haven't been too locked in on leak code, but I'm back. So I left off on this problem, num decodings, and yeah, I think I'm gonna just go ahead and get back into it. It has been like a few hours. Um, so I don't really remember where I left off. I remember I was having some issues. I'm not sure how much I showed, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead, probably just restart and hopefully get it done. And then after this, that'll probably be the end of this video. So let's get into it. Okay, well, that was actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. Um, I think before, I had like almost the almost the exact same thing that I had right now, but um, I just had like one weird test that wasn't working um, with the zero case on this problem. But yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it here for today. So thank you for watching and goodbye.